Hello and welcome to Austria or Germany. Could be either one actually, it gets a bit confusing down here in the south. Where I have come to drive the new Aston Martin DBS Super Legera. That's not how you say it. Super Legera. That's better. Super Legera? Super Legera. And this is it. The DBS Super Legera. And as the Aston Martin team joked in the press conference, if Ferrari can call their car the Superfast in English, then surely the Brits can use a bit of Italian. Right, as you can see it's raining, but as a Cape Tonian, I am quite a fan of rain, so that's not going to stop me. But let's take a look at the DBS. Very different to the DB11 in terms of the front end, dramatic carbon fiber splitter at the bottom, huge front air dam, which really is the signature of this car. The headlights are very different as well. The bonnet is completely carbon fiber. It's a completely different bonnet to the DB11, and it incorporates these two big nostrils with a Super Legera sign next to them. Now, these aren't just decorative, those are functional. They let hot air out of the engine. Coming down the side of the car, it rides on 21 inch P0s. There are two wheels to choose from. Massive brakes, up front 410 mils carbon ceramics. If those discs were wheels, they'd be 16 inch wheels. That is some stopping power. And really in totality, it's just beautifully proportioned. Aston Martin says that it immediately has to look like the most powerful Aston Martin that there is. And I'll give them credit where it's due. It does look like that, but for me, this is the most beautiful modern Aston Martin. So while of course this is based on a DB11, this is quite a different animal. Not only does it look radically different and much more powerful, it is much more powerful. They've taken the 5.2 litre twin turbo V12, fiddled with it quite a bit to now produce 541 kilowatts and 900 newton meters of torque. And if you're outside of South Africa, that's 725 PS's, whatever. PS stands for. It's a lot. It's more powerful than the new McLaren 720S we drove recently and because of all that talk Aston Martin had to go to ZF and say listen we're sort of shredding all our gearboxes over here can you design a new 8-speed for us and they did. So, twin turbo V12, more power and torque than is really decent, let's be honest. Flick it into sport mode, drop a cog. Holy crap! <laughs> that is phenomenal power. Oh my word. Does anyone need that much power in their lives? Maybe not, but you almost definitely want it. One thing I must say about this region of Germany is that it is spectacularly beautiful, the Berchtesgaden region. It really, really is. It has these wonderful winding roads with lakes and rivers alongside and huge dramatic peaks, but there's no shoulder and there's hundreds of blind corners and once you get stuck behind somebody that's pretty much it the leather's nice while i try and overtake another caravan it's probably a good time to take you on a tour of the interior which is available in this blue and sort of cream color scheme or black with red stitching which I personally prefer. It does feel pretty special in here. Everywhere you look, it's just very luxurious. Alcantara all over the roof lining. This leather, which is exclusively sourced from Scottish cows, is very, very soft indeed. I love the squared off steering wheel. That's got a very unique feel to it. And look at the cockpit, the instrument binnacle. It kind of looks like a I don't know, a set of Transformers sunglasses. But there are some nice touches. I love this little volume slider over here. A 
that's quite clever. And of course, they have stuck with this beautiful engine start button, which glows red when you put your foot on the brake. Oh, I do like that. So the designer of this DBS actually did the previous one as well and I think it's safe to say that he knows what he's doing. But a recent addition to the Aston Martin team is a gentleman who has come over from Lotus. In fact, he spent 26 years at Lotus. So I think he knows one or two things about handling. And he came in because I don't think Aston were too happy with the way the DB11 handled. And he told me that they actually did an update for the V8 DB11 and the DB11 AMR. And all of the lessons they've learned, all the mistakes they've made, have made this DBS Super Leggera what it is. And something they've focused on very intensely is the front end. And when I drove DB11 a couple of years ago, the front end did feel quite light. It didn't feel like it had as much bite as you would want such a powerful V12 front engine car to have. And I'm very happy to report that they've sorted that out almost completely. There is tons of grip at the front end in this car now. So Aston is at pains to point out that this is a super GT, not necessarily a super car, a super sports car, or a hyper car. This is a continent crushing coupe. Oh, I'm proud of myself there for that alliteration. It's quite a heavy car when you say compare it to a McLaren 720S for instance, but this isn't a carbon fiber tub car. But if you compare it to say something like an F-Type, this is actually about 200 kilograms lighter. So imagine an F-Type with 540 kilowatts and 900 newton meters and 200 kg shaved off. And then you start to get an idea of how exciting this Aston Martin is to drive. All right, here we go. What does a twin turbo V12 with all this power and torque feel like? Well, let's drop a cog. Is phenomenal power and like the Aston guys say power is nice but you drive torque and you really can just drive this car pretty much just using your right foot and you barely have to flex your toes on that throttle pedal to get a monumental amount of power out of it it's so impressive the way this car delivers that torque and interestingly it has the same torque to weight ratio as that bat crazy Aston Martin Vulcan that they released a few years ago. Yeah. That, this thing is mental. Oh, God, I'm enjoying this. So you may have read a few years ago that Aston Martin did a big tie-up with Mercedes-Benz. They used the 4-liter twin-turbo V8 in the Vantage, for instance. You also can get it in the DB11. But they also took on a lot of the technology, for instance, the infotainment system uh, from Mercedes-Benz, the rear parking camera, for instance. And I think that's fine. I mean, if you're Aston Martin, why do you want to spend time and money bothering about trying to develop a bloody reverse camera. I mean, who cares? Just buy it from somebody else and focus on things like this engine and the suspension and that exhaust note. That's what people care about. No one cares about a reverse camera. Sorry, excuse me for a moment. I've kind of forgotten how to be a presenter. Oh, that's a nice noise. I want to hear some more of that. So when presenting the car yesterday, the head of driving dynamics told us he really wanted this car to deliver its power in a very linear way. He doesn't want the driver to have to be a hero to get the most out of it. He wants just about everyone who gets in the car to instantly connect with it and feel like they can get the best out of the car. And a lot of that has come down to how they've managed the turbo lag and the way the power comes on when you get on the throttle. 
it is super linear. There's none of that sort of elasticity you sometimes get from a turbocharged engine or that sort of on-off nature you sometimes get from a turbocharged engine. And that, I think, is a real achievement here. Yeah, the way that you can build speed in this car, the way that you can manage the power. With extensive use of carbon fiber, including the prop shaft, Aston have shaved 70 kgs off the DB11's weight, which I suppose is just enough to earn it the title of super light. It is probably the most technologically advanced Aston Martin ever, if not the fastest, but I have a feeling this car will be remembered almost entirely for its outstanding design. This is surely one of the best looking cars ever made. I think what I really like about this DBS Super Legera, 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 is, uh, God, I've got to learn how to say that word. I'm Italian after all, but it does feel like a very exotic car, this. The DB11 felt like a big, fast GT car, but this, oh, there's something about this. There's so much character. The noise is fantastic. The power is otherworldly. The way it looks, it just absolutely stops traffic. People whipping out their camera phones to try and get a few snaps of it. This is right at the top of the bedroom poster list of modern supercars right now. And I think what Aston have really done here is create a car that people lust over. And that is pretty much what a supercar should be. I think if I put up a poster of this car in my bedroom, it might severely annoy the missus. I don't think she'd put up with it. Something just tells me, you know, I don't think she'd like it.